Good day. This video is a quick coverage of all the threats that you do get within your email environment. That's a persistent threat within your environment. So many a companies we've seen has been compromised because people click on links and open files that they should not. And the problem is that you cannot train a person not to click on a link. People have to click on links to do their jobs. But now the way this works, for example, if we look at this email very quickly, it says uh, there's a legal action for unpaid invoices. Uh, we have a uh, name similar to the country where I'm residing. Uh, so that it is, and so you think it's actually possibly somebody that uh, that could take legal action against you so basically let's look at this quickly it says uh, good day on numerous occasions we have been requesting payment for services rendered see the listed invoices attached we have requested a meeting on this matter several times and nothing has happened at the last one on the 17th of january 2018 regarding this matter but we've received no further response it is over three months and they carry on like this so it is a threatening so this is usually the type when we do social engineering when we actually look at phishing in testing environments within enterprises you will use either something that is um, sort of like an entertaining a component for a person that he wants to click on or a threatening uh, letter like this now if we go and look at what's inside this letter now I just have to say forehand antivirus software is running real-time protection and up-to-date and the antivirus software I use I do trust many of these applications or phishing attempts or applications that the guy write would bypass your antivirus software because it's new it's not up-to-date and specifically if they do target you directly uh, it's not in the wild so when we look at that first and foremost uh, I see this that it says the document is protected now it says open the document in Microsoft Office previewing offline is not available for protected documents if this document was downloaded from your email please click enable editing from the yellow bar above now this is normally not the case what Microsoft Outlook would do is if you click on a document on the top like that it will not show you an image like that it'll actually show you the document uh, as a preview Oh, that's that's the first one now the way we'll look at this quickly is we will not open the document because the document might have macros or any triggers to execute a script so what we'll do we'll go here we'll save all the attachments I'll save both I've got a special directory for possible viruses and I'm saving it into there but before I actually look at the files what I'd like to do is I've created a thing that we can actually look at the header the message options where it is coming from so there's a couple of ways of doing that I've created a thing called options message options that I can quickly look at the other one is you can double click on it and go and look at the message options the message options is right up here which we've created we'll click on that and quickly look at the source path of the email so it says here the return path so the email is presumably from Anika Bota at yannex.com it is to info at sacs.co.za it was received from vpsmedis.co.za and it gives us an IP address and it was accepted by our email server externally now further what we can actually look at is that it was actually accessed by webmail medis.co.za so it looks like possibly the email account at this place was compromised and if we can actually look at we look at which is the user that was compromised possibly uh, we can actually see that it is drvpmncube at medes.co.za so that's the actual sender so that's the person whose password was actually compromised and which this syndication or single person or someone was used to actually send a broadcast mail out to many people and you can actually see there's no two sign in here as well so basically what they've done there's no two and they've created a bcc and they've sent it to many people 
Now, once we've saved that, we could quickly look at the content of those files. So let's actually look at that quickly. First and foremost, let's actually look at what is in the archive, the actual compressed file that says R20. So that's a RAR file. We can actually go into that. Copies of legal action for unpaid invoices, copy and copy two, they're all the same. So it looks like it's possibly, they want you to think it's multiple invoices. Then we go back. I'm going to look at that document now. Remember, do not open it. You need an editor to actually go look at the content of that. Now the editor I use is No Plan Plus Plus. Really like that. So if we look at the content, so this is the content of that file. Now let's actually look at this. That is now the word dot doc. Now the difference between a dot doc, which is the older version of Microsoft Word, and the docx, docx is the newer version which actually contains zip files inside an XML file. Now what you can see here, there's object data, so as you can see there's some scripting coming down here. First and foremost, here's a picture that's been created using JPEG, and this picture that we see here, I can assume only that this picture is that one we saw right in the beginning when we clicked on the file, and it said to us, uh, this file is protected, you have to go open it. So immediately this shows you a JPEG, and you it's trying to confuse you to open that now and the next thing is what they'll do there is object data they're dumping some data in here um, which can be referenced back so let's actually look at that quickly now the data here could be binary it's pure binary um, to create a file to be executed so if we go a little bit lower so this is all still within the doc file in the word document that you think it's a it's a it's an invoice Let's go down. We can convert that later to ASCII and I'll look at that separately. Okay, so that is the end of that. We'll, we'll look at that separately. Still some data that comes here. Now, here's another one. So here what they've done is created. You can see it's a binary file, so it's a binary file. It says here OLE, so object link in a bin link. So what they're doing here is trying to link a file back and actually create possibly the binary file inside there. We haven't done the analysis of that, but this is a quick view to show you how easy you can get compromise. And here's some more files that they actually do. So they actually a lot of content, a lot of different files that are in here. And then here, as you can see, the object class they're using, Shockwave. So it's Flash. So Flash, which hopefully you've taken off all your machines within your environment, at home, enterprise, etc. So what they're trying to do is using Flash to compromise the system. Now, once you have enabled it within Word, Word has got a little bit more rights and it will execute a file. And then right at the end here, what I've seen when I looked at it earlier is that they do link back, let me actually show you here, link back to a, a website that we can actually look at. So if you actually look at here, so here test one that are used as a Russian site, new build and the PHP and data equals send and a thread is zero. So it actually creates possibly a new thread. It grabs all your data from your machine, depending on the rights that you have got as a user and possibly submits that. So we'll look a little bit deeper, but this is just to show you how easy it is for them to compromise your system. So do not click, click on any links that you don't know. If you don't know, ask your IT help desk or security officer to make sure that you know it's either coming from inside or, or it's actually a trusted environment and make sure your antivirus software is updated however at the end of the day you need to actually be more vigilant than actually just clicking and opening and, and worrying about these things ask somebody and practice safe hacks